The nasal cavity, the pharynx and the larynx make up the upper respiratory tract. This is where we concluded the previous part. Now it's time we have a look at the lower respiratory system. As the air passes down the larynx, it has to travel far, crossing many junctions in between. The first junction is the trachea. This is also called the windpipe. This is a slender muscular pipe that lies just below the larynx. It usually makes up the throat region and extends till the fifth thoracic vertebra. Post this, it gets divided into two branches. The trachea is surrounded by rings of cartilage. It is the hyaline cartilage that surrounds the windpipe, which gives both strength and flexibility to the tracheal muscles. If the structure is observed from the dorsal view, then the cartilage rings are found to be incomplete. That is, they are C-shaped and do not form a complete ring-like structure. This helps in easy contraction of the muscles when the food is passed down the esophagus lying just behind the trachea. At the point where the trachea is about to terminate, it's the next junction that arrives. This is called the bronchus. As we can see here, bronchus acts like the entry point in the lungs. It gets divided into two branches called the right main bronchus and the left main bronchus. Which is the right and which is the left by the way? Well, here we are referring to the structures with respect to the human body that has this system. In other words, if this individual is standing in front of you, then this is the right and this is the person's left side. Similarly here, this is the right and this is the left main bronchus. Getting back, the bronchi enter the respective lungs to get further divided into bronchioles. Now before we talk about the lungs and the surrounding protective case, let's continue with the bronchioles and their terminal structures. The bronchioles are these smaller root-like structures that are present inside the lungs. These ultimately lead to the bundles of these tiny sacs. Any idea what are these structures that appear like cluster of grapes? Well, these sacs form the basic units of the respiratory system. They are the actual sites of the gaseous exchange. That is, the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the lungs and the blood occurs in the alveoli. One single ball like this one is called the alveolus. Any idea why these alveoli have these several spherical ball-like structures? Why isn't a single alveolus a complete ball? Well, many smaller balls help in increasing the surface area. Imagine this single ball. Suppose it has the surface area of x meters squared. Now if the same volume is occupied by 25 smaller balls, it's obvious that the surface area will increase by many folds. Similarly, here as well, the number of smaller structures make sure that the surface area increases and the maximum surface gets available for the gaseous exchange. If we zoom in to see a single alveoli, we find that the cluster is richly supplied with blood capillaries. A cross-sectional view of a single alveolus helps us understand that it's very thin and composed of a single-celled membrane. The extremely thin membrane helps in very easy exchange of gases between the alveolus and the RBCs flowing through the capillaries. The process of gas exchange occurs via diffusion. So oxygen that has come to this alveolus gets diffused across the membrane and is grabbed by the RBCs. Once this is done, the carbon dioxide also gets into the alveoli via diffusion. And this carbon dioxide travels back the complete tract to reach the nostrils and move out of the body. This is how the gaseous exchange occurs in each alveoli. Now that we know how the components of the respiratory system present inside the lungs work, let us focus on the lungs and the other remaining components of the lower respiratory tract. Let's learn them in the next part.